All right, guys, welcome back. Let's get back into it with the full resin kit. God Gundam here, and I'm glad you guys are enjoying the series. A lot of people have been commenting on the first couple works in progress videos uh, that you enjoy seeing about this, so glad to hear that. Glad you guys are enjoying it. I'm enjoying working on the kit as well, too, so if you haven't seen previous episodes, in the first video, we were cutting up a bunch of Legos to make the different joint and frame parts. In the second video, we covered building the torso and the head. And so now we're continuing on with the arms. And I'm going to approach doing the arms a little bit differently than how I did the torso and the head. Uh, because I ended up having to do some putty work on the holes in the resin, I was not really expecting that. And so it kind of caught me by surprise. But now that I know that that existed on some of those parts, and it's probably going to exist on some more parts, what I want to actually do do first. And first I'm just going to work on one arm at a time. Uh, so I just first want to check all the parts like for the left arm here first for example. So uh, I'm going to go through and just like just uh, cut off all like the gates on all these and then check for any pinholes and stuff uh, and fill those first so that then uh, that's that parts out of the way. So I'm not like halfway through building the arm and then I find a bunch of parts that need putting and uh, kind of have to stop halfway, if that makes sense. So a couple of interesting things here with the arm, too, is that uh, so far in like the torso and the head, we didn't really have like the Lego frame bits really doing much, except for just basically providing like a core to build around. Uh, this is gonna be the first section so far where the Legos actually, like we'll actually have to test like the stability and the movement of them as will be, they'll be using like a, obviously those Lego parts for like the elbow joint, and the shoulder joint and stuff. So we'll see how that holds up. We'll also be using some magnets. Now we could use, I mean, people use for a resin kits just magnets for a lot of stuff. I could have been magneting, magnetizing, could have been installing magnets in a bunch of these parts. Just rather than gluing, you can just magnetize stuff. Uh, some people do that. I haven't really been too bothered with that for this kit, but this does come with a few magnets and it's basically for the uh, gauntlet on the side of the arm. You'll glue two magnets into different points on the forearm and then one onto the inside of that gauntlet part. So then you can move that to the upper or lower position if you wanted to change the hand or whatever to, you know, having like the, the open, the erupting burning finger, whatever. Uh, you can move that down to the lower position. So that's what you've got the magnets there for. So it's cool those were included. Also, we've got uh, these white parts, which were the 3D printed parts. So we'll see how those like compare to the resin parts, but I'm sure they're pretty much gonna be mostly the same. So first, let me go through here on all of these. And again, just I'm just cutting off all the big gates and I'll just cut those all down, clean those up and see where we're gonna have to do any putty work first off and then we'll get to putting this thing together. All right, so actually, uh, miraculously, all these parts are good. There was a couple of tiny little bubbles that I found like, like uh, on the inside of a part or somewhere where it's not gonna show at all, so it really doesn't matter. So that's good. A couple of things though I will need to fix, like uh, on this part, for example, you can see it's got that panel line there, currently kind of filled with dust. Uh, it's supposed to go all the way from the bottom to the top, but on this side, this is where the gate was on that, so it's just totally filled in. So I'll have to uh, rescribe that out all the way to the end. Not that difficult, it's just a straight line. And then this little tiny part, which goes on the front of the shoulder armor. I don't, not really a bubble, but some sort of little uh, imperfection here on the corner, I'll have to fill that in. So I'll just put, uh, I guess, just a little drop of super glue on there, which should be enough just to fill that in. Wait till it's dry and I can sand that down just so that this is smooth. Now, at first I thought that was just like, I assumed it was just supposed to be a little detail or something on there, but I realized, oh wait, that's not really supposed to be there. So I'll have to fill that in. Otherwise, that's all, pretty much everything that needs to be done on the left arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and now check all the parts for the right arm as well before we get to building. All right, so we're all good to go. And the first thing we need to do is to glue one more Lego piece up inside of our shoulder part here. So the shoulder armor piece, the main section, just going to glue this Lego piece up into there, which will allow this to then uh, snap onto our shoulder joint, which you remember if, it, uh, if you can remember, is this one here. So later this will be able to plug down onto there like that for connecting our shoulder armor onto the top of the arm. So like this, we need to have this actually glued in place. And then from there, basically all the other parts are meant to be glued on, but I can't really glue anything on yet as all the stuff is meant to be other colors. So we have like 
these parts for the outside of the shoulder armor, which need to be red. The center section there is meant to be white. And these parts just fit onto there like that. Yeah, they're supposed to be red and then glued onto there. Then we have this little piece on the front, which will attach onto there. That part is supposed to be white onto there. And then actually this piece in between as well is meant to be sandwiched between the two of those uh, in there. In there like that and then you have a couple of vent pieces one vent and the second smaller one so those all fit in together like that to make the shoulder armor but yeah they all need to be separate colors so I can't really glue anything else in place for the moment but what I can do is just make sure that uh, these two parts are lining up well now there's going to be a seam between these but just because of the design, I'm okay with that. But I just want to make sure that still just the lines at the top and the bottom, or like, I guess, both sides, that we don't have like one that's like slightly, one side is like slightly more raised than the other. So even the, the line through the center here, I'm just going to leave that there like that. That's fine. But I just want to make sure that it's just straight here and straight here. Just sand those to make sure. And all these parts still need to be sanded yet, too. I only did just a little bit of sanding on them so far. So, you just sand those, make sure that uh, those are lining up really well. Alright, so then next we're gonna glue the upper arm parts together with this little Lego piece in between. So hopefully it fits well, we don't need to spend too much time trying to make this fit. But let's see, it looks like it should be a pretty clean fit in here between these parts. Yeah, actually, if anything, it's even like kind of slightly loose in there, but that's all right. Uh, and this is just all going to be one color, so these parts I can go ahead and just glue together like this and just give them kind of the once over, make sure everything looks pretty good, but you can go ahead and just glue this into place. Then we've got our elbow joint, which is these Lego pieces we put together, and then these 3D printed parts, which will kind of go around that. And just to make sure uh, everything's going to be fitting properly, I just put the 3D printed parts here together first, and those are certainly a little bit tight. Let me just go ahead and give these a little bit of sanding here before we put the Lego pieces in between. And these do fit in here a certain way, so you need to fit those parts into here like that, and then the other one here on the other side. There we go. Yeah, it's pretty tight, so I probably don't need to glue that. I think it's probably gonna be plenty tight enough there just the hold of those 3D printed pieces together. So should be all good on that. And there is our elbow joints. That is going to supposed to plug up into this part, but it's pretty tight. So I think I'm going to, uh, yeah, it looks like that's not uh, totally drilled out really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill out that hole a little bit better. Well, and after also having to shave down this peg to make it smaller and drilling out the hole more, putting that in uh, finally goes in, but it's definitely too long, so I'll have to trim that down. Didn't really mention that in the menu, at least as far as I could tell. They need to trim that more, but uh, pretty clearly does need it. There we go. That's much better. All right, now on to the next part of the arm, which is just uh, this part here, let's see this one, I'm sure probably going to need to be trimmed down as well and probably, sh oh no, it's not, maybe not shaved down because it does seem to be fitting in there alright and actually fits in there fine, but yeah, this one also is going to be too long, so I can cut that down a little bit. There we go, looking good, and then next we have this part here for the side of the arm. Now I think this can be glued because it's all going to be the same color, right? Uh, it's all just white, so that I can, I can just go ahead and glue these pieces together. Uh, if I just make sure, you know, everything's good, I need to double check. Ah, this is the other thing I wanted to talk about here while we're on the subject of this piece, because this is a pretty good example of what I wanted to show you guys of the mold line. It's one thing that this kit does have a little bit on some of these parts of some mold lines. You see that that kind of like jagged line there? This is supposed to be just a flat surface. That line is not supposed to be there. That's just a mold line uh, from the molding of the kit. And so those need to all be sanded down. So sanding that just makes that a little bit more apparent so you guys can see that. So this is the other kind of thing that just needs to be sanded down as well. So you have to kind of look out for that. Sometimes they're not very easy to see, but just through the sanding process, I'm finding them here and there. These mold lines that just need to be uh, sanded, but you know, it's not the biggest thing in the world. So just make sure you pay attention to get those as well.
Then we're also going to have this uh, cuff piece that goes on the, low, on the lower arm here as well like that and here's where we're going to be placing our magnets so i'm going to go ahead and put those in now as well and make sure just they look like they're everything's going to fit in here okay all right so those are set and then we got the other one that which will go inside the, the gauntlet part on the side of the arm but so these will later need to be glued together, but I don't want to glue them together quite yet because I'm thinking maybe I'll do these in different colors. I'm planning to do like a kind of two-tone, like RG style two-tone white on this, so I may paint this cuff part in a slightly different tone of white. So I'll just keep them separate for now. And it looks like they can be both held together by this Lego piece, which we're going to put in here for the wrist joint as well. So for this one, we just need to cut off that circular bit there on the top. And then that will fit up into here. And I think we can go ahead and actually glue this into this part. But let me just make sure that it's fitting up through here first. Seems kind of tight, but there we go. So I think we can just go ahead and glue that part into here. And then uh, that just plugs into the upper arm there like that. So that's pretty cool. And actually, I maybe just don't even need to glue that. It's because it's pretty tight fit in there. So it's kind of all right just the way it is like that. So that's pretty awesome. All right, cool. Then uh, this one here is going to go into the hand. Now, uh, at the moment, the action, like the final pose that this kid is going to be displayed in is not totally set quite yet. So I don't want to uh, put this in the hand because uh, unfortunately we only have one of these. So I want to be able to actually like glue this into the hand in order to do that. You know, I need to know which hand we're going to use. So. There's unfortunately, I don't think we had, I'll have to check, maybe there was a couple of spares. I think maybe that we did, actually maybe I do have a couple of spares, let me check. I think different versions of the God Gunda maybe have the yellow parts uh, appearing as either gold or yellow, kind of depending on which uh, kit or artwork you're looking at, but anyway. Uh, so those will be able to rotate like that, and then these will then just fit onto the arm here. So the magnet I'll have to glue in place on the inside of here later, uh, like during the final assembly as well and then that will be able to just stick on here, but I can kind of temporarily just sort of stick it on there and it sort of holds on there like that, looking very cool. And now what I'm concerned about with is this part here, uh, the shoulder plugging into the top of the arm there. And it only goes on that far and that seems like too much of a gap there. So I think I'm going to cut down that peg a little bit so this arm can go up a little bit higher onto that peg there for the shoulder armor. So when you see that, like that. I think it needs to be slightly higher up in there. Uh, so anyway, basically uh, there we have it for the arms. Everything is uh, pretty much done then for that. Uh, I can just move on and basically do all the same thing for the second arm of course. And then we can move on to what looks to be like the legs are next. But that's just what's in the manual. I think the waist will be a really quick section to put together. So just before we wrap up this video, why don't we just go ahead and take a look at the waist then as well. And then we'll do the legs for the next work in progress video. Okay, so uh, just once again with these then, the first thing I'm going to do is just remove all the big gates off them. Make sure we don't need uh, to putty anything. Although who knows what will come across. We could very likely uh, start seeing some bubbles on these parts as well that will then need to be uh, filled with either some glue or some putty. But uh, we'll just see. Anyway, so for the time being, let me just get everything, just some initial uh, cleanup done on these, and then we'll get to putting these parts together. All right, so side skirts first, and it's back to doing some Lego chopping for these. And let's see, got these parts, which are uh, like a handlebar parts, aren't they? But actually, we need to cut off the handlebars, and because we're only going to be using just the center part, so just going to give those a chop. And then this guy as well, we need to cut him off uh, where? Here, but we need to leave a little bit of this tab because that's going to actually plug into our piece there, like that. So into the back of our side skirt there, this little Lego piece, plug right into the back of there. And it's very loose at the moment, so definitely we'll need to glue that into place. It's not going to stay in there at all. And then this other one will be attached onto there like that. And it kind of fits right up into there pretty snug and nicely. That's pretty good. And then this is going to fit here on the side of the main piece. So you can see how that's going to fit there on the side of that. Uh, but yeah, everything is just kind of loose on there. So nothing's really staying in place quite yet at the moment. 
On the outside of the side skirts, though, you just have the separate piece here, just that will go there for attaching on the beam saber handle. The beam saber handle then will just kind of uh, rest in there. I don't know, oh, there is a specific place. There's a little slot that should fit down into there, so that's good. Don't need to worry about putting that in like in the wrong place or something. So uh, you can turn that. Obviously, it's just kind of free in there, so you can set it to whatever angle you want, but that'll just be like that. So simple enough. As for the main center section of this, Basically, this back part will be attached here onto the back, and I did find uh, a couple of little bubbles, basically like one little bubble here on the bottom of that, so I'll have to fill that in, not too big of a deal. And another piece, there was like a little bit, not like a bubble, just again, just sort of like a weird uh, chip or kind of like out of it, but uh, that goes onto the back, and then this one fits onto the front, just like that pretty simply, and then onto the front of there, you have this little piece here, which will be a little red piece that goes in there on the front skirt as well, but again, that'll just be glued in once it's painted separately. So, these ones though, I am thinking whether I want to just glue them on now or not, but I'm thinking maybe not, and just glue these in, like, again, just as part of the final assembly, just glue, glue, and those will be stuck in there. So that means, like, this whole section of Legos, I'll just have to paint separately, just as it is, so I'll probably try to clean that up a little bit more. Uh, just so that that's everything's good on there, that's looking good, because some of that is going to be visible, it looks like. As for the other skirt sections, we have these little guys here. These will just be glued onto the back, and I will probably just go ahead and glue these at the moment. That just kind of sticks on there pretty well, though, so that Lego piece will just glue onto the back of the skirt armor, the front and back skirts, uh, and then that will just stick onto these ball joints here, like that, on the front and back of the skirt. But once I'm putting these together, I'm realizing that these uh, front skirts are too wide apart from the center section. They need to be kind of closer towards the center there. Uh, so I think basically what I needed to do uh, differently was to make it so that these blue pieces were a little bit shorter, uh, or like a lot shorter, basically, so that those weren't sticking out quite so much there like that. But yeah, I don't know, I followed the manual, so I don't know what actually went wrong. I mean, if you look at the picture there, that looks pretty much exactly like what I've got here. So, whatever the case, if you look on the front there, it doesn't have the big gap between the center section and the front skirts, and it really shouldn't. So I'm going to have to figure out about that. No, of course, what you can do, sort of like trick it a little bit by kind of like folding these in. And that's kind of a little bit slightly better, but they still need to come in a little bit tighter, I think. So I'm gonna try to work on that. But I think these all these all these Lego parts, I think, are all super glued. So <laughs> uh, we'll see if I'm able to sort that out. But that's gonna pretty much be it, I think, for this episode. I'll work on that, and in the next episode, we'll pick it up with uh, building of the legs. So we'll build the legs and then probably just the backpack as well because there's just a few pieces for that and then that'll so the next episode will be kind of the last of the kind of general assembly of the whole thing and then we can start to move on into the actual painting process or anything so that should be pretty cool thank you guys all so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye bye